right, welcome to the service tonight. We'll take your hymn books. We'll turn to page 403, page 403, and sing, Isn't the love of Jesus something wonderful? Aren't you glad he loves you tonight? Everybody stand if you would, please, and we'll sing. Is wonderful. Do you remember when you first heard the gospel? Somebody told you about it, you thought about it, then you received it. And then you told somebody else and you found out telling somebody else and leading them just as good as getting saved all over again. That's what the church is all about. And we had a wonderful day today. I'll let Brother Frank get up here and tell you all about it, but just a wonderful day today. God's so good. He always is. Sometimes he's extra good. Today he was extra good. I'm so glad to see you all here, and we're inviting the folks that's joining in by way of Internet and hear radio soon. Let's pray, and let's just talk to the one who loves us so. Father, we do love you only because you first loved us. We're thankful for the precious gift of eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. We exalt him right now and thank him for his wondrous love we just sung about. Lord, if there's one listening or present, hear away, Lord, that doesn't understand that. May they understand it through your help. Spirit of God, would you convict of sin and draw toward the Savior. Use the choir right now. Prepare our hearts, Lord, for the engrafting of the word to follow. And, Lord, we're listening, so please speak to our hearts. We need thee, and it's in thy lovely name we do pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Enjoy the good choir tonight.
around the throne eternal. Way of rain glory. When we join the chorus of pernal, sing and the sweet story. With the saints we'll ever be happy. Did you enjoy that choir tonight? Say amen. I enjoy just being with them. That's awesome. They sing out, and I appreciate them doing that tonight. Just a reminder to our young people who we see a big crowd of them over here tonight. Thank y'all for sitting here, starting off uh, for our uh, bus workers and Sunday school conference. It's going to start tomorrow night. I've asked our young people to come sit with us. After church tonight, we're going to have an afterglow. We're going to go to our uh, small fellowship hall. We'll have some pizza and chips and drinks. I want to invite them down there to have a good time of fellowship. Next Saturday, we are having a Nerf Dart War activity in our gym. And you say, what is Nerf Darts? Well, um, you just have to look it up. It's going to be fun. Uh, we're going to have a lot of activities. That will start at 530 next Saturday evening. So all the young people are invited. You don't have to have guns or little Nerf Dart things. If you don't have them, we'll have some for you. And if you do bring some, make sure you put your name and initials on them if you want them back. Because sometimes... They find the good ones get gone. So look forward to doing that activity on Saturday at 5.30. Thank you for your time. Brother Frank. All right. Thank you, Brother Brian, for all of that. Thank you, choir, for the good number of her. Wasn't that good? Good way to start the service off here tonight, thinking about that place over yonder that we're headed to. Amen for that. And uh, by the grace of God, we had 14 more that's headed there than was this morning, 14 saved in our different services. Isn't that a blessing to be able to hear that? I was thinking tonight uh, in the prayer room, there's rejoicing in the presence of the angels over one, and it ought to be a lot of rejoicing right here over 14. Amen? So the Lord give us a real good day, and we're grateful for that. And uh, all of the effort that went into this uh, special bus thing that we had has uh, appreciated everything that you've done. And Dan will probably be saying more about that a little bit later on. I'm not going to go into that. But our bus minister, if you had noticed to your, uh, your, to your right, is that in the North Division, they had a total of 124. And the, uh, oh, let me get on the right page here. They had 124. And it uh, looked like uh, Joe Banner and his workers, Stanville route, was the leading uh, one bus in that division, South Division. Uh, they had a total of 132. And Weston, Blanca Costa, they had 50. Uh, on our bus. Had some good numbers there. Look to your left, if you would, and you notice in the East Division, they had a total of 110, and Kernville Route, Judy Cruz and her workers had 32. The West Division, uh, West Salem B, Noah Balaram and Brother Ron Huffman had 30, and that was a leading route there. And there was a lot of work that went into every one of those routes, every one of them. And if you've worked a bus ministry, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But thank you, bus workers, and everybody that had a part in that this morning. Our A and B Sunday School teachers, uh, thank you for the good job that you do and always do do. Uh, they're in our bus church. Uh, they're in our junior churches and so forth. And uh, thank you for everything that you do in the services. It takes a lot to make the service go, does it not? And so we certainly appreciate that. Well, you know that Sunday night is that night when you get to shine. If you don't do it but once a year, 
You get to do it on your birthday or anniversary or both maybe. But if you had a birthday this past week, how about standing uh, just as a testimony to God's goodness for you for another year? Had one up there, Brother Matt? Had uh, Okay, all right. We, all right. Y'all like to stand up and sit down right quick, Steve? That's all right, buddy. Well, happy birthday to you anyway. The ladies trio is going to sing uh, for us later on. We'll dedicate that to you. Now, how, this is good, too. How about the second birth date now, the second birth? All right. Hey, here's two right off. Let's see how many more. How many more over here? Okay. Well, that second birth, I ought to say, is more important than the first, but it's equally important because you can't have the second one without having the first one, right? Amen. Well, how about anniversaries now? If you had an anniversary, stand, remain standing, and we can tell, uh, find out how many years you've been married. Anybody? Anywhere. Don't let me miss anybody. Okay. Not only does old men, they can't hear, but they can't see, but so far. <laughs> we don't have no anniversaries. Okay. Well, let me do this. Let me get right into uh, our announcements here tonight. And uh, then we will also uh, give you our prayer list and get right on down the line so Brother Dan can uh, get in the pulpit up here and preach for us here tonight. But I do hope that you'll avail yourself of uh, the uh, the bulletin that we put out, and it's a lot of work goes into this, and so get it, keep it with you, keep up with the announcements, keep up with the people that's in the hospital and so forth, and it'll help you also. But notice this, that reaching the Tried for Christ ministry is restarting now uh, because of the weather thing and so forth. But if you'll notice in the newsletter where it says we're asking for a week of prayer and fasting starting today, uh, through Saturday, March the 11th, choose one day to pray and fast and the different things to pray for there. I think that's a good idea. And get involved with this in some way or another this year. See more folks saved. And then also the seed line ministry, you know what that is about, uh, correlating the John's uh, and Roman scriptures is going to be given. And uh, Brother Matt just mentioned to me they're going to Brazil this year. Uh, but it's going to be a lot of collating that goes on thousands of copies of it. And that's going to take place on March the 9th and the 11th, 8, to, uh, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And so keep that in mind. The, the widow ladies and single adult ladies over 55, uh, Monday, March the 13th from 11 a.m. to 1 in the small fellowship hall, uh, you will have... Uh, your special meeting there. The cancer outreach is going to be the same day, Monday, March the 13th at 7 p.m. in the small fellowship hall. And uh, then March 18th is the Master Club's regionals, and they'll be here. And so be praying about that now and pray about our Master's Club, by the way. Uh, the, uh, the Carters are over that right now, and I'm sure they would appreciate our prayers for them. And that's a tender age and a good age to reach boys and girls for Christ. And so pray about that if you would. And then let's don't forget our Christian school, not only to pray for it, uh, but they're open now for enrollment for the uh, upcoming year, and that's K-3 through the 12th grade. And uh, spread the word around. Uh, folks interested in a good Christian school and so forth, tell them about Gospel Light. Have them call the school office and uh, Miss Richards and uh, the crew there will take care of them. So remember these different announcements that we have here. And uh, then let's get into our prayer request. Well, there's a couple more announcements too. Hold on just a minute. Uh, the safety response team meeting tonight after church in the choir rehearsal room. And then, you know, March is the Pastor's Wives Appreciation Month. And so let's do something to show these ladies how we appreciate what they do and standing behind her husband. And uh, that is a big job. Trust me, I know. And uh, a, a wife can add so much to the ministry of her husband. And ours do just that. And so let them know that you appreciate that, okay? Now, for uh, the newsletter, if you'll notice, let's continue to pray for the family of Brother Powell Petticord, you know, that went on to be with the Lord. Pray for uh, him, if you would, or not him, but his family. And then home from the hospital, Miss Ann Pettis and uh, Brittany Webster 
and Ruby Whittington, Brother Robert Stroop, and then Steve Wagner uh, to the Countryside Manor where he's going through some rehab there for a while. So remember that. Not in our newsletter, but do uh, continue to pray for Miss Sadie Testerman. Uh, she's under hospice care now. She's at hospice, and so pray for her. She's having uh, quite a struggle there. So remember Miss Sadie, if you would, 97 years old. I think she's our oldest uh, living member at this time, I think. And a special prayer request, Sandy Childers, and having uh, knee re surgery Tuesday morning. Remember that. And then pray for the Hassel family. Uh, loss of sister-in-law, Wanda Hassel, and passed away on Saturday. And so remember that family along with the petty cords. And then a couple of cards here. Thank you cards. One from uh, Clarence Barrier. We call him T-Bone. But most of you know who I'm talking about. It says, thank you, church family, for your love and prayers during my surgery, God's grace continues one day at a time, just as he promised. Clarence, T-Bone, Beria, continue to pray for Clarence. And then also another card here from Brother Grady. And Brother Grady's been uh, under the weather here for some time. Glad to see him back. But dear church family, thank you for the calls, cards, and visits. It's good to be back on my feet after almost four months. Thank you for keeping uh, our family in prayers also as my brother passed away last month. Grady Stevens, so remember that. And then also by way of special prayer request here, Brother Jake Moser, uh, who's having shoulder surgery on March the 8th, along with Edna Marshall having a hip replacement on March the 14th. And then Brother Jerry Wilkes. Now, Brother Jerry had surgery, and everything went well. Talked to him last night, and he said, I'm doing real good, recovering at home, so you pray for him, as well as Tara Kirby. Now, Tara's going through, uh, it was an eye condition that she had, so pray for her. Ida Carter's sister with lung cancer, and then Wayne Hester had a cousin here with cancer, and Jimmy Turner, pray for him, and then Phyllis Bullins with a stroke, and so let's remember those folks. And then uh, let's don't forget those that's going through uh, this cancer situation in some way or another. In fact, we had got word uh, just tonight in the prayer room that Brittany Guthrie, who we've had on the cancer list, and she said, we're over that now, and take me off of the prayer list for that. So remember to pray for her. But Melanie Sis, Brother Mark's wife, and Richard Rising and Price Redmond, Sarah Herbert, who's been on these lists for a long time. And then Brother Robert Brown also, and Steve Whitehart and Buddy Bowman, and Karen Holt and Stephanie Marsh, and then Tom Bruner Sr., and Clinton uh, Wiles, and Tony Danner. And we always remember Sue. Uh, Danner at the same time. She don't have a cancer issue, but she's got a lot of other things we need to be praying for about, along with Nancy Phelps and Joan England. And so let's remember these different folk in prayer. Ushers, if you would, please come, and we'll receive our Sunday night offering. And uh, Brother Kenny Over, if you would, how about stepping down and leading us in prayer? Good to have Brother Kenny back with us again tonight. And then let's don't forget uh, those that all-important prayers that we pray and we mention it, and we mean to mention it because we're in such a need of God in our country today. Let's pray for our world situation. The world is in is in a just in a chaos every which way that you look. And it seems like everything's uh, just on the brink of just. It could be World War Three. Could be any kind of collapse you can think about. It seems like the world is starving on one end. Hey, they're fixing to do away with all your money on the other end. They say the American dollar, you know, is going to nothing. You're right. So if you got any you'd like to get rid of, if you would bring it on, I'll take care of it during that time. And you won't have to fool with it at all. <laughs> but they are talking about that. Hey, but let's also pray uh, for our brothers and sisters, our brothers and sisters in these foreign countries that's going through terrible, terrible persecution for the cause of Christ. The leaders of our church and Brother Matt, our deacon board, and under him, there are several folks that's in uh, positions where they have to make decisions. And let's remember them in prayer here tonight. How many tonight has a special prayer request by an uplifted hand? Brother Kenny, you come and lead us if you would, please, sir, in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, it's a world of need. Imagine what little we know, and you really see the whole picture. And Lord, nothing moves you, you that keep Israel and watch them neither slumber or sleep. Lord, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, the peace of the Jewish people in their hearts, 
as they celebrate the Feast of Esther and the great deliverance, that they'd be pointed to Jesus and how he is the deliverer. Lord, we pray for all these that are sick, that have gone through difficulties of trials and tribulations, Lord, that you would touch and heal already. I've heard of those that have given reports how you've healed them, Lord. And Lord, we pray that you'd give grace and strength. And Lord, we pray that the gospel of Jesus Christ would go forth stronger than ever. Lord, may we keep our eyes on that goal, not on the surrounding tides and ocean waves around us like Peter and start looking down. Lord, may we look to you. And Lord, may we be a part of passing the good news of the gospel on. We pray, Lord, these offerings would be a blessing to further the work of this ministry and that you would fill your preacher with the Spirit of God tonight. Help us, Lord, to hear your message in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, they are still the best ladies trio in North Carolina. That's right. I'm so blessed to have them. I want to read to you before Brother Dan comes and preaches just a letter that we got in the office emailed to us by one of our bus riders many years ago. There are names mentioned that I don't know, but you might know. So I'm going to read it. Give me three minutes, will you? It'll bless your heart, I promise. This is from Susan Key. And she says, hi, my name is Susan Brown Key, and I was a child and was part of your busing program that brought me to church on Sunday mornings and Sunday nights. I wanted to share with you the value of this program and its impact on my life personally. 
From 1964 to 1975, my family lived in Winston-Salem, and during the first couple of years, my family attended a new upstart church in the Forest Park area called Forest Park Baptist Church. However, there were some issues and disagreements that turned my father and my mother off to being part of any church. I was very young and do not remember anything about the conflict, only that my parents had quit going to church. There was a family there by the name of Burkett that continued to pick up my brother and I so we could still come to church. And at a young age of around six years old, I asked Jesus Christ to come into my heart one night at a Christmas play practice. I remembered being thrilled, and as any new believer uh, was, I couldn't wait to go home and tell my parents that I had gotten saved. I remember busting through the door of the home that night and shouted out the good news, only for it to be received with, what are we going to do about this? My parents refused to allow me to follow any kind of a public acknowledgement of Jesus Christ through baptism, and soon after we moved, and it was no longer convenient for the Burkettes to pick up my brother and I for church, this was where your ministry came into my life. We moved to a new street, and one of our new neighbors occasionally visited the church, and I was able to go with them and do not remember how all the dots became connected, but soon I was on the bus to church on Sunday mornings and Sunday nights. There were many Sundays that my parents would not even was not able to get up, and I would wake myself, get dressed, and get ready to meet the bus. Each Sunday, the bus driver faithfully had something for me to eat and drink on the way to church and a snack for the ride back home. Through this ministry, Dr. Bobby Robertson, the bus driver, and others came to my home to talk to my mother and father to try to get them invested in, in their faith and reunited. It took a, a little over two years but finally, my parents agreed for me to be baptized, and I remember the excitement that that brought into my life. My mom came that Sunday night with her neighbor, but my dad would not come. Each Sunday when the altar call was given, I would hit the altar and pray for mama and daddy. I remember praying and asking others to pray especially for my daddy. I thought he was lost because of the way he lived his life. In the four to five years that I was part of this bus ministry, I was never treated as anything but a young girl with a love of Jesus in my heart. There were picnics, ice cream parties, and once even a flight to Pilot Mountain as a treat for my faithfulness to ride the bus uh, to church that Sunday. I can never say thank you enough for what this ministry means in my life, how it shaped me in the path into adulthood. She closes the letter. Fast forward to today. I'm 58 years old. God has blessed me with a godly spouse who is serving as a local pastor to a small country church. I've taught youth Sunday school, directed VBS for a large home church, served in the North Carolina Baptist Assistance Team for VBS Sunday school, taught Bible drills, served as an association district and state judge. I'm not telling you these things as a measure to boast what I have done or am doing, but to simply say thank you for pouring your love into me as a child. I love the direction that I did not I, I love uh, and appreciate the direction that I did not receive at home. When people discuss the bus ministry and ask, do we ever see the fruits? It is, worth the is it worth the cost? Is it worth the effort? Let me say to you today, yes. I was changed by the bus ministry and pray that it will continue for others out there like myself. As far as answered prayers, yes, my daddy and mama did get their hearts right. I was 27 years old, married, and had been on my own for a few years when this finally became an answered prayer, and my dad went on to serve as a deacon in his church until his death in 2020. I often think of my time at Gospel Light each time I hear the song that Ray Bolt sings, Thank You for Giving to the Lord, I Was a Life That Was Changed. Frustrated that I can't remember the faithful bus driver's name, but I have never forgotten his impact. In closing, let me just say once more, thank you. Thank you. Isn't that good? And that could, be, that could be told time over and time over and time over. Brother Dan's going to come preach and, and tell us what we did today. But I just want to say this. Appreciate Brother Dan and what he's doing with our bus ministry and how he's been used in the school. He's, he's a true friend, a man of God. Come on, Brother Dan. All right. Am I on up there? I hope so. I'm be glad you're in church tonight. Man, I want to thank everybody that took part in that meal. Today we had 400 and I think 39 is what it was and uh, we had about that many workers but that's good we needed that too 
And it would never happen without the workers directing traffic, uh, bus captains chasing kids down through the parking lot. You know, it was kind of good to see that. And, uh, and 14 got saved. And I just want to praise the Lord for everyone helping with that today. And I could go on, but good night. We want to get ready to start this Moving Forward conference. And uh, Pastor Matt asked me to preach, and so I'm going to try to do that tonight. And this is a message that involves gospel light. I've never preached this message before, so we, we may be here till midnight. We don't know. But uh, before I go any further, the girls in the office, the three secretaries, I have to announce, or I won't be allowed in the office, that right after church tonight, everyone that's signed up for the conference, make sure you go into the foyer. Don't come up here. Don't go to the choir uh, rehearsal out in the foyer, you know. For us people who don't know what that means, the entryway to the church, they're going to have your lanyards that you need to wear for our conference. See, we want to give those out to you tonight. And that conference will start tomorrow night with, at 5 o'clock with a meal, uh, orientation at 6 down in the large fellowship hall. And I'll get to you teenagers in just a moment. And uh, we're going to have uh, Brother Wilkinson will be preaching here at 7 p.m., uh, Brother Francis will be preaching downstairs after we all meet up here with the Spanish. But something different this year. you got to come see this. I, I, I've seen a couple of videos of it. 20 uh, senior high, junior and senior high bus kids from Chicago are coming here to be with us for two days, okay? And uh, they've got an ensemble. Uh, they got a testimony. And uh, they're off the streets of Chicago. So this is, uh, they want to do this, Brother Wilkerson has been pushing this, so pray, because there'll be a lot going on. Uh, Brother uh, Jessup's here already, him and his wife, they'll be teaching this week. Uh, uh, Brother uh, 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 Cox will be teaching this week, because we have classes starting on Tuesday morning at, uh, we have breakfast at 8, and donuts and coffee, and then 9 o'clock to noon, we have all kinds of classes. Then from 1 to 4, we have 1 to 5, basically, classes. Have a big meal in there uh, at noon. And I think there's about 50 Spanish folks coming over to work in their ministries there. I hope and pray we'll have like 90 to 100 from here and some outside people. And this is to help us strengthen our ministry. And tonight when I speak, I'll be talking a little bit about missions, but mostly about gospel light and the ministries that we have here that God wants us to be invested in. Amen? Now I come to the teenagers. Hey, if you're a teenager or sitting with the teenagers tonight, would you stand up? We have some teenagers up here that may not know about this. Aren't they all nice and handsome? Isn't that cool? Okay, I got one up here. I got, I got any others? Okay, now, tonight you all get the pizza pizza, all right? And, and, and then this week, and she, you're invited, and any teenager here for tonight, but this week, those that work in our ministries here, they're going to be going to this conference learning how to do things because that's the future. Isn't that great? Amen. Thank you for coming. We'll catch up with you later. Have a steep seat. Stay awake. And I told one guy the greatest youth pastor in America will be preaching tonight. <laughs> and he showed up. He thought it was uh, Shetler or somebody, but it's not. But anyway, we're glad you're here, James. I'm just picking on him. Hey, get in your Bibles with me to Romans chapter 10. And also keep in mind that uh, you bus captains, I, I met one tonight coming in at 440. I was on my way to preach at the Spanish church. And uh, over there tonight, Ricky had a good crowd. And I'm telling you, that, that'll, that'll wear you out. Ministry will make you tired, but it's a good tired, is it not? Amen. Now, uh, tonight's message, I got uh, uh, a thought. I was preaching in Omaha, Nebraska last year. And uh, one of the pastors there took me on the seventh floor of the corporation he works for. He took me into a large room. And it was the uh, kind of the uh, hub of the, uh, this large corporation. It was 12-story, one building. And in that room was the thought, be the change. And uh, it dealt with, uh, you know, just a, just a theme, be a change, be the change. And uh, in what we're doing, and do the right thing uh, at the right time on the right day. And had a thought, uh, be the change, get right, and do your job better. I began to dwell on that a little bit. And, uh, and we have themes in our school, like all in, we have a theme. And, 
We have a theme this year, Envision It. We've had themes in our school before, In His Steps. And Amy Holly was playing the piano for me to, uh, over at the Spanish church. I didn't coach her ahead of time. And the year she was hired, I think over 20 years ago here to teach, I asked her, what was the theme of the first year? And she never forgot it. Focused. Focus. Stay focused. You know, uh, being a theme, as we start this week, I want to encourage us to think about the thought, be the change or be the cause. Be the cause that God's put on, put on our hearts. Yeah. You know, when David took down Goliath, he said the statement, is there not a cause? And we'll go to him tonight at the end of it, but I want us to start in Romans chapter 10 as we deal with missions a little bit. We deal with ministry. I'm going to ask you three questions and I hope I'm done by 10 o'clock, all right? Let's take a Roman. <laughs> he said amen to that, amen. A Romans chapter 10. Let's look at verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How many has done that in there? Come on now. How many of you teenagers have trusted Christ? You can raise your hand. You're all quiet. Amen. How? Then shall they call him, call on him whom they have not, they have not believed. And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? All ministries today come through and go through the local church. You bus captains and bus route workers and ushers working today down there in that dining common, feeding that meal, God touched your heart and he sent you down there to be part of that. Bus mechanics up early this morning, gassing the buses, fixing them. God sent them down there to do that. There's more to that than getting a paycheck. And you as a church got to understand the heartbeat of gospel light is winning people to Christ. Amen. Discipling. We have our you. We have the school. We have the bus ministry. We got some ministries. I've got the ladies ministry. We got all kinds of things going on here. But the bottom line is to win people to Christ. Amen. And I want you to catch this next verse. And how shall they preach as if they be sent? And it is written, as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. I want to pray in just a moment. And I know you as a church, you understand what I'm talking about. And I want you to please understand that you are good people. And you give to missions and you give to ministry and you give your time and you give your treasure. But I want you to understand tonight when we come to the decision-making time, it is so important that his will lives through your life. Amen. There's more to it than just coming and listening. He wants us to be getting involved. Yeah. And he made this statement, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But then it says in the next verse, he needs to send us. In the next verse he does do, do this to us. I'm going to pray and start a story that starts at Gospel Light, and I hope to end it up at Gospel Light. I've got to saddle up just a couple of thoughts. I've never preached this before, and it takes me sometimes a while to get it down. But I want you to let God speak to you tonight. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we come to you tonight and thank you. These people sitting here tonight, teenagers, young people, parents, grandparents, children, they all want to please you. May we tonight listen to your word and apply it to your will for our lives and do that in the way you want us to do it. Let us be the cause that you use in someone's life. Like Pastor Matt read this letter tonight, he had no idea what I was going to start the message with tonight. But praise the Lord for some bus captain that answered the call in his life and her life and that woman, that family, where they are today because they, they, they were the cause. They were the people that you used. May we do this again. May we challenge the young people tonight 
May we challenge the older people tonight that everything we do and say will honor you here. And Father, we pray these things in your name. Amen. Now, we're only going to go to two portions of Scripture tonight, this one here and then back to 1 uh, Kings but I want, or 1 Samuel. But I want to say something, and that is this. God's heart is to love the world. And whether we got missionaries here tonight uh, visiting, and I want you to understand, and, and no matter where you're at in the world, whatever church you're in, God, His heart is to love the world. But you know what? As I look out in front of me tonight, there's some unlovely people sitting in front of me. Now, don't, I, I don't mean to insult you, but weren't you all sinners? <laughs> huh? Got any ugly sinners in here that is saved through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen? And uh, God loves us. He died on the cross without, for us. And can I take it another step? <laughs> God loves those <laughs> that we don't love. Famous preacher once told me from this pulpit, God demands us to love everybody. That doesn't mean we have to like them. And that was one of Bobby Robertson's quotes. You're in the ministry long enough, you'll catch on to what he's saying. You know, in our culture, in our world, and I got to be honest, it is hard to love things that does not love God. It is hard to love people that does not love God's word. It's hard to love people that hate who we are and what we are. But you know, God loves them. Amen. Amen. A little girl sitting in the meeting today, and she scared me, Brother Matt, that one on Pete's route. And she's special. And Pete got first place or whatever, and she let out a squall. Wowee! I thought somebody fell. And she run up and she said, I'm so happy you gave him all the money because that means I'm going to get money. <laughs> you know, I want to say this. We have, we've been commissioned by God in Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20. All powers given. We're supposed to teach and preach the gospel to every creature. And this, this is all powers given. And he says, lo, I am with you always. But there's some things we have to understand here. Being commissioned, God loves the world. And our job and our calling, and may I say our cause, from the moment Christ died on the cross, crucified, rose again the third day, he had it planned before then, he's got it planned after then, after that. I want you to understand that what we're doing tonight, what we're doing this week is not uh, Brother Frank's uh, idea. It's not Pastor uh, Matt's idea. It's not uh, John Wilkerson's idea. It's not Gospel Light Baptist Church's idea. Uh, someone has, uh, didn't invent this. Missions and ministry started and commissioned by the Lord Jesus Christ. Now you get that. Now my question is this. It's one thing to talk about missions and reaching the world. It's one thing to have a ministry conference and how to do it, but how do we get people to participate in ministry? You know, this the, uh, the thought of be the cause. You think about that. I want Gospel Light Baptist Church to be a, not be a spectator church. Y'all know what a spectator church is? Now, I usually preach in three churches, three types of churches. Those that watch it happen, those that have no idea what's happening, in the last churches, those that are making things go. Amen? Now, I want you to understand, Gospel Light needs to be a church that is a participating church. And it's more than just running the bus routes and teaching the classes. And, and, and it's more than just a, a doing the youth group or doing a camp. It is doing what God has called us to do, and that is reach this world for Him. You know, may I say this, you need to be the cause in reaching our community. I want to be the cause to have Gospel Light Baptist Church support more missionaries. I want to be the cause to reach more folks for Christ through the bus ministry. I want to be the cause uh, to be, uh, watch this, the triad, reach the triad. I want to be the cause to raise that three-year-old in my Sunday school class. Um, like Miss Richards, I want to be the cause, the principal that keeps the school going in the right direction. I want to be the one that uh, preaches that chapel. I want to be the one that corrects that kid. I want to be the one that loves on that bus kid that no one else loves. You want to be the cause. God wants to prepare you for this. He wants to use you for this. I've been here about a month. 
Brother Frank remembers Randy Childress. Randy Childress, uh, he would tell you, and he told me, he said, that Brother DeLong, now he was shy, but he'd, he'd invite a rock to come to church. And he was a bus kid. He come up to me after a bus meeting. He said, hey, my name's Randy. Everybody calls me Chili Bean. I said, "That's he looked like a Chili Bean, didn't he? Randy was a little short guy like me, and when he talked to you, he had a hard time looking at you. And he looked at me, and I went out on his bus route to go with him, and he was struggling. He looked at me at the first stop, and he said, Brother DeLong, I sure do love you, but I need help. I don't have the intelligence of other people. I can't talk real good. But he said, I've got a heart that loves these bus kids because I am one. And he says, I, I know, I know. I've been called by God to pick up bus kids at Gospel Light Baptist Church. You know, when I remember him saying that, and I want you to understand as by way of introduction, and I want you to catch this, and I want it to sink home. We live in a world, we live with churches that I've preached at the last 20 years, to have a, many of them has lost their cause. And I have the privilege to travel. And I want to say this church is one of the top two or three churches in America where I preach at that has not lost the heart to bring people to Christ. Amen. There may be others out there. I just do not know them. But I want us to understand. I have three simple questions tonight to ask. As we go into this conference this week, as we go here tonight, I want you to catch this first question. Do you believe in the power of the gospel? Do you believe in the power of the gospel? You know, it says in Romans 10, 13, you can look there again, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's it. And I want you to understand in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20, I already told you about the Great Commission. That's it. He wants us to do this. God has commissioned this church to reach the lost in Walkertown, uh, the triad area, Forsyth County, going out, going out and going out and going out into the uttermost parts of the earth. And he's commissioned us to do this. Let me explain this. I got saved at Camp Provida. You've been right there by it, Matt, back up in the hill country there by West Virginia and Ohio. And uh, for eight years, my mom would send me to a camp. And I was unsaved as a dog. I, I, you know, I was raised in a Christian home, but I wasn't saved. And there was a man in our church named Jim Beaver, and he owned a mechanic shop, a Ohio station. And uh, she commissioned him to witness to me. I didn't know it at the time. And, and she said, I talked to my boy. And she told Jim Beaver, she said, I've been talking to Danny he's one, and Sam, the twins. There's two of us. And that Danny's hard-headed. Now, he listens to God's word, but he hasn't moved. And he said, I, I'm going I'm to fix you a blueberry pie. And Dan's going to bring it to you. And I need a tire fixed on the tractor. He'll bring that with him. And when you get him in there fixing that tire, she said, take your time. And you get into him a little bit. So I went there, a, a numb and dumb teenager, and I, I had that pie in my hand, and, and I was rolling the tire into the gas station. And he, hey, Danny, good to see you, Jim uh, Beaver said. And I'm holding that pie. And went, he said, I'm not going to take it. He said, I want you to stand for a minute. I need to talk to you. And he took that, and I'm holding the pie. He's backing me up, going through the Romans Road, you know. And it took him 15 minutes. The tire sitting there. I'm holding the pie. And I said, I got to go. And I did not get saved. A week later, I was at camp, August 15th, 1969. Hal Webb preached a message. The Russians are coming. The Russians are coming. I didn't get saved, young people. I was too proud to go forward, so I stayed in the back and waited. I went to my cabin and tried to go to sleep. I could not. And at 11.25, I got out of that bunk, walked from here to the back of this church. Jim Beaver sitting in the cookhouse with the lights on, fresh pot of coffee. I walked in and said, I need to be saved. I've never been the same. 
something happened. And the power of the gospel got a hold of my heart. Do you believe that? Second question tonight is this, as we start this conference. And this is for missionaries as well as people in ministry, people wanting to get into ministry. Do you believe that God wants everyone to hear the gospel? Do you believe that? I want to let you know that a little over 8 billion people on this earth read this week that 49% of them have never heard the word Christ or God except in a cuss word or curse word. The simple truth is we must reach the world from right here at Gospel Light. We can have our bus minister, we have the, the triad minister, we have soul winning, and we have our schools and our camps, but we have missionaries around this world, and I, they have to believe that God wants everyone to hear the gospel. When Chili Bean and I went out on his bus route and taught him how to knock on doors, he, he had it pretty good. And I said, you need to look the people in the face and just tell them you're, what you're doing, and he did. No matter what they said, he said something to every house when you would leave it. I love you. And I, I don't know if I believed him at first, Matt. I, di I didn't believe, you know, you know hey, I, God bless you. It's a southern thing, right? God loves you, right? Do they really mean it or is it just a saying? And I rode with him on the bus the next day. I'm driving it. He's behind me, two little bullheaded guys bouncing down the road in South Winston. And... Uh, and as I'm driving and we're getting to the first stop, he starts, <laughs> you, uh, you got hay fever? I look in the mirror, <laughs> no. What's wrong with you? Your wife fussed with no. What are you crying about? I'm just praying that the first kids get on the bus. If they don't, man. Wow. Do you see much of that anymore? Little old bus kid. Come from the other side of the tracks in Winston-Salem. Frank, you know what I'm saying. He was from the other side. You can find the book of Genesis. He said, I didn't know where it was in the Bible. But the God got a hold of that man's heart, and it wasn't about his education. It wasn't about his upbringing. He made a decision, and he said this that morning to me. I believe every, God wants everybody in my bus area saved. Do you believe that? Third question, listen very carefully. It's this, do you believe that God wants to enable you and others to get into the ministry of gospel light and also into missions? Look what it says in chapter 10, verse 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? How shall they preach? Who does the sending is the Holy Spirit. Who does the calling is God. And let me remind you, will you be that cause? Apostle Paul serving God and God's blessed him in his ministries and he's just got it going on, him and his missionary team. And they're sitting there praying where to go and you see in the book of Acts, they, they wanted to go this way. And the Holy Spirit said no. He wanted to go that way and the Holy Spirit said no. And he said, I want to go this way and he said no. That Macedonian call came, you know, that in the night. When Paul listened to that Macedonian call, the Bible says, we immediately endeavored to go. Now let me stop you for just a moment. And don't get me wrong when I say this. I think welding ministries are great. I think raising cattle on the mission field is okay. But that's not the number one thing for missions. Because when he said, Paul, here's what you're supposed to do, Paul, when you go to Macedonia. Now catch this. Preach the gospel. Hashtag in a story. Preach the gospel. The third question tonight is this. Do you believe that God wants to enable you and others in this church to get into missions, but also get into ministry? How shall they hear unless they have a preacher? And that preacher will be sent. That's how God works. Amen. How many of you people can recall the person that led you to Christ? How many of you got saved the very first time you heard the gospel? One, two, maybe three. 
How many have that person that would not let go of you? They stayed after you. They prayed over you, and you got saved. Could you raise your hand? That, you're the call. They are the, they're the calls for you being here tonight. And God wants to use every one of us, and he has a cause for every one of us. But I want to give you a real quick picture tonight. This is my second thought, and that's found with me. Go in your Bibles now to 1 Samuel 17. And I want you to catch this. As I switch the thought here, Goliath is a bad dude. And Goliath has been given Saul heartburn for 40 days. And Saul's army is there, ready to do battle with the Philistines. And the Bible says the battle was set in array. Military people, that means the Philistines are behind this ditch on the mountainside, and the Israelis are behind this ditch on this side of the mountainside, and right down through that valley of Elah is that creek. Thousands of Israelis here, and and the Philistines is here. I want you to catch the thought here. And for 40 days, Goliath would come out and just curse and swear and call out the God of heaven. And the Israeli soldiers, every time Goliath would do that, oh, they were dressed in their uniforms. Oh, they look shining in their outfits. And they're in God's army. But when Goliath came, these guys timidly all went and sat down. They hunkered down in that ditch. They got behind that tree. And uh, when Goliath would do his thing, and when God, Goliath would call God out and defame everything we believe in, they just sat around and they wish someone else would do something. Somebody take the big guy down. David, by the orders of his daddy, you know the story. Jesse, and David was the runt of the bunch, and Jesse sent him with some clothes, some cheese, some... Uh, some uh, 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 money to end the army. His brothers were serving there and, and David that runt showed up there in the morning and he, he got there and jumped out of his cart and ran in to see his brothers and, and as if he's going to see his brothers, I want you to, you know the story, Goliath stepped out and he's a yelling and a screaming and, and everybody else is kind of trembling and hiding. You see, they, they uh, didn't do a thing. And David makes a statement in verse 29. I want you to catch it there. We're going to stay in this chapter for a few minutes. He said this, Is there not a cause? You know, f- folks, I want you to understand, we are facing a Goliath today. And that is the devil himself. We are facing a world that did not exist 10 years ago. But this is right where God wants us. This is not a time to run and hide. This is a time to stiffen up and say, I want to be that cause. Now, I don't want to get political. You can watch Fox News till your eyeballs fall out. You can listen to all these pundits and hear about how everything's going on. But when's the last time you have grabbed a spear for God and chucked it at the enemy? And I'm talking about more than just singing, everything's all right in my father's house. I'm saying get in the battle because there are opportunities in this church that is unbelievable. I mean opportunities. And that's going to come up in my message. So there's two types of characters facing Goliath. Those that would not answer the call of recruitment for Saul and God, and the other group is the one that answered the call. As I study this chapter, I want to use it as a springboard to encourage us to be like David and not like the other soldiers. Amen? Let's look at the first thought. Number one is this, and this thought, why did no soldier answer the call to recruitment? They're all in the army. They're all in the church. But why are they not doing it? Number one, because they spent too much time in enemy assessment. Well, the the more they looked at Goliath, the bigger he got. How do you know that, preacher? Look at verse 4. Join me in this thought here. uh, uh, There went out a champion of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath. 
of Gath, whose height was six cubits in a span, about nine foot something, six I think, over two and a half, almost two and a half feet taller than Shaquille O'Neal. How many of you folks have ever stood by a seven foot person? Okay. I come to their belt. I was with Bill Cartwright and a guy named Lanier coming down an elevator with my wife in Indianapolis about 1994. They're playing the Bulls. So I drove down to Indy. And I wanted to see Michael eating in the restaurant. But these two guys had to pay their own bills. Now, uh, Bill uh, Cartwright was seven foot one and a half. And the other guy was about seven foot one. These guys had like 23 size shoes. Like They're like, whoa. So I'm, I'm getting up there behind them. I said, watch this. And Sandy's there. And I'm like, my neck come to Cartwright's belt line. And Goliath was over two and a half feet taller than that. And I'm telling you, when these guys saw him, the more they talked about him, the bigger he got. Look at the next verse. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. That's a lot of weight. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders, and the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron, and one bearing the shield went before him. Whoa! I ain't going to take him on. You know, taking on the Incredible Hulk's one thing. Taking on a guy about five foot nine or seven is another thing. Uh, there's no way. He got bigger. And you know what? When you have an opportunity to serve God, you'll be surprised of the excuses that will come up. Because when you start to assess what it's going to cost you, you young people, if God calls you in the missions, God calls you in the ministry, don't take anybody's preaching that says you have to say, you don't sacrifice anything. God just blesses you and blesses you. Say amen, parents. God just blesses you right there. Amen. Say amen, missionaries, on that. Because I have stepped out twice by faith and just said, okay, God, I'm going to do it. Broke as Job's turkey, and I've watched God bless everything beyond my comprehension. And that's not about the money. It's about having a faith of doing what God puts in your heart to do. Can I say this? Secondly, they did not answer the call of recruitment because they thought they were already involved in the army. But they're just showing up. What do they do in the army? They blow, what do they blow when everybody comes to attention in the mornings? Get out, re re reveille, that's what it is. You go out there and stand on that parade and y'all got your outfits on, everybody's neat. You know, you Marines are really, not, have to be neat, you know, and the Army and the Navy, whatever. And everybody, they got their uniforms on. They got their guns on. They got everything ready to go. <clears throat> but when it's time for things to happen, it's amazing how they don't want to get involved. You know, look at what verse chapter 17, verse 2. Let me prove my point here. Why they didn't answer the call of recruitment? The Bible says in chapter 17, 2 of this chapter, And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched the, uh, uh, by the valley of Elah and set the battle in array against the Philistines. Are they fighting yet? No. They're lined up to fight. All right. Now go down with me. Follow the story. We go down 17 verses later. Same armies, verse 19. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. Oh, really? Sounds pretty good, two verses later. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. They're kind of doing a, uh, looking at each other. We're going to throw down. We're going to go at it right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. How many have ever seen guys wanting to get in a fight and they just talk but they do nothing? The guy that does not talk, you've got to be aware of, amen? And they're just all talking to each other. So Goliath shows up, and when, when he does... Everybody runs and hides. Now, this is happening for 40 days. David's absorbing it in about five minutes. But coming to church is great. But when you study the book of Acts, the book of Ephesians, the book of Philippians, these people were intensely involved. That's why everything grew in those days. They were not only in the army, they were moving in that army to make something happen. They didn't have their pits dug and staring at each other each morning, have their little cup of coffee, and when Goliath shows up, everybody goes back home. This happened for 40 days. And I want you to catch this. Just because you go to church 
That is great. But I think God wants more from us. He wants you to be the cause to get somebody saved. He wants you to be the cause to have a Christian home. He wants you to be a call, cause to raise uh, kids for Christ. He wants you to be the cause to, to have enough faith to step out in missions or step out in bus ministry or step out in Sunday school ministry, step out soul winning in the triad. He wants that in this church. Amen. But he also wants it in our missions program. Amen. I want you to catch this with me. Since the pandemic, now we're post-pandemic, Brother Jessup, you travel a lot. You'll get this, and some of you, and, and, and the other missionaries in here. And, and uh, that's, things have happened. Uh, only about half of the churches are sh showing back up. Uh, excusing is a new term. Everyone is excusing. Uh, they don't want to go back to church. They can just hear it on the radio, and they don't. They're not getting any spiritual food, and the devil starts to taunt us, doesn't he? He starts to get after our families. He starts to get after the direction that we want to go. And I want to ensure you to, to tonight that I'm not speaking to one person in here. I'm speaking to myself and, nation, and churches around this nation. The Goliath today, there's a picture of the devil. And he wants to scare us out. He wants to discourage us. He, he politely wants us just to go and sit down. Chili Bean told me about three year, years in, Brother Frank, his rowdy groan. And uh, he said, Brother DeLong, I want to take you back on my bus route. And we went. He got his crying under control. That route grew from five or six. And, and he never had no education. He'd tell you that. And he didn't have any. He just worked as a millwright. And, but he never would miss a Saturday visitation unless he was sick. He would never miss. He would he just faithful. He said, I may not be the smartest. He said, Brother Long, I may not be the best speaker. And he wasn't. But he said, I want to be the most faithful person here. And I watched God bless his faithfulness. Amen. I watched God bless him because he would listen and he would apply. And he actually believed in what was being taught. And I'm telling that little route grew. That little route doubled. And I mean, I could be at a prayer meeting with him and you just planned on staying for an hour because he abused, mentioned everybody in that thing. I think God blesses that, don't you? I want you to understand the third reason and last why these soldiers did not answer the call to recruitment is this. They were objects of low motivation. Look at verse 25. Now you young people listen to this. Low motivation. And the men of Israel said to David, Have ye seen this man that come out surely to defy Israel? And he come up, and it shall be that the man that killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. Are you kidding me? You talk about the whole enchilada, the cake and ice cream. He gets not a little bit of money, and he don't get a $5 gift card for Chick-fil-A. He gets a $5 million gift card for all of Israel. Great riches, Saul promised him. Secondly, he gets the big boy's daughter. You talk about the perks. Well, come with that. You don't have to you know, pay for anything. The horses, the chariots. I mean, you are the king's family. But the last one got my mom's attention. Your father's house shall be free in Israel. That means your clan never has to pay taxes again. About that time, my mom would have kicked me out to the front of the line to go take on Goliath. No taxes. Just think of that. But not one person would step up before David got there, and he wasn't even in the army. I let, catch this. Not one person. Because they looked at it as finances. They looked at it as money. And you know what? There is nothing worth in this world for me to take that giant on and not one person move politely late waiting, politely waiting. Those guys sat in those ditches kind of like this, waiting for someone to step up. And here he comes. Let me give you a couple thoughts about David. And that is this, why did he answer the call to recruitment? Number one, David realized Goliath wasn't the issue. God was. 
Now you listen carefully. You've got to catch it. I want you to see it. I'm not making it up. He's the only one to bring God into this chapter. And I want you to catch this as a teenager. Teenagers, the value of a teenager's right with God is more powerful than you think. Look at verse 45 and 46 of this chapter. And David said to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come thee into the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee out of my hand, and I will smite thee and take thy head from thee, and I'll give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines at this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know. This is good, isn't it? That there is a God in Israel. Is there a God in gospel light? Does your life exhibit that? Does your testimony, your, your, your opportunity to serve Jesus, I want you to understand, David realized Goliath was not the issue. God was. Number two, David had a servant's heart. Look at verse 32, 34, and 36. You'll see it three times. Thy servant will. Thy servant did. He didn't have a big puffed up thing in him. He didn't have the pride yet in him. He hadn't been contaminated by the king's household and by what was going on around him. David had a pure 15, 16, 17-year-old heart that trusted God with everything. And that's right where God had wanted to use him. He had a servant's heart. You don't see one soldier serving anybody before David shows up. Number three, David answered the call to recruitment because of past accomplishments of what God has done for him. Do you know Christ is your Savior? Could you raise your hand tonight? That's cool. How many ever got in a mess after you got saved? And it's on you? Not so many hands are going up. How many ever made a mistake, lost your temper, said the wrong thing, threw your faith out the window? How many's made those mistakes? Now you can put your hands down. Listen very carefully. God will use you. He wants to use you. Because if he can take care of that lion, and he can take care of that bear for David, now watch me. You can take care of that, listen to me, men, that pride thing, that's the bear. Take care of that lust thing, that's the bear. Take care of that worry thing. That's the bear. You ladies, listen. The lion thing, the, the, uh, the, the worrying, uh, the pain, and the agony of mistakes that you have made and others have made. There is a God in heaven that not only saves you, he will sanctify you even when you get dirty. He will clean you up. Been there and done that. Wore that t-shirt. David shows up. I'm going to take this guy down. Why? I don't want the armor. I took a bear with a sling or a stick, and I took a lion with, you know, with a bear and a, uh, with a stick or with a club. And I mean, the Spirit of God, He took care of me. So, what is this guy, this Philistine? He ain't no lion. They may weigh the same. He ain't no bear. He may be taller than the bear, but those bears and lions are tough dudes. What has God done for you? He answered your prayer, He gets you through that backslidden state. Did he take down your tiger? Did he take down your lion? Did he lift you up? Do you have victory today? There's a reason why you're sitting here tonight. Amen. You've been through all that, and now it's time to take down Goliath. Yes. Here's the last thing about David, why he took down Goliath, why he answered the call of recruitment. He had a cause. See, God had uh, prepared him. Secondly, God had him in position. Third, he knew what his purpose was. In the right valley, facing the right army on the right day, with the right sling, going across the right creek with five stones in the right place to pick them up. Preacher, watch this. David's always moving forward. This is the moving forward conference. It didn't hit me until I was preparing this. And Goliath's getting ready to throw down. It says, and David hasted to him. Now let's stop it right there. For 40 days, that man made fun of our God. For 40 days, he said he would never bow down to the God of heaven. Ever. Well, that rock hit him there. Most people think between 80 and 90 miles an hour. 
about the size of a marble. Hit him right between, I think he hit him right in here. Usually when you get hit with something like that, you're going to go which way? Backwards. Brother Bob, you say backwards. Backwards. But I can see the hand of God taking that giant's head and moving it forward. So when that old boy's head hit the dust, it bowed down. And, it said, and David ran towards the army of the Philistines. And the rest of us just sit and watch. Because that's David's day, not ours. No, it's in the Bible for all of us. God wants us to be the cause. Well, that day when David cut down Goliath and, and, he, and he killed him and, and they had a great victory today, who caused that victory? Spiritually, God did. But who did God use? David. Yes. And God wants you to be that David. Yes. He wants to use you. But you have to say one thing. You have to agree to one thing. Will I step up? Will I step out? David went so fast and killed him so quick. I think about a thought that I read on William Borton once in his autobiography. And here's what was his life's goal. Say no to self and say yes to Jesus every time. Chili Bean. His drought had grown. It was my last year here. And Brother Frank, you'll remember this. He had a big day. And he didn't have a whole lot of money. And he got some hot dogs. He got some bags of potato chips. Some of you men will recall this. He was so excited, he had about 60 kids on his bus. And he'd been crying all morning, Preacher, we did it, we did it, we got our goal, you know. And, and he says, we're doing hot dogs, join us. He was so excited, he set his hot dog table and a grill up behind his bus, he thought. And he said, when he came around the back, he went to the wrong bus. And he had all these kids standing there in line. He'd been grilling there's like hot dogs, potato chips. There's boxes of ice cream. It is the best bus day ever. And then the bus driver on the bus, he's behind the wrong bus, chokes that diesel bus. She chugged, and she blew, looked like a hand grenade went off behind that bus. ba boom Black smoke. I mean, I'm like 15 feet away. What in the world? And Chili Bean standing there, dripping in that their diesel smut oil, and every ounce of that stuff landed on his hot dogs. And he went to crying. And the kids are in shock, and I run back there, what happened? And he said, I don't know. <laughs> he made an honest mistake. Balling, what am I going to do? His face, his, the, the black's running down his face, and... He said, I just love these kids, and now I can't feed them, and I don't have any money. I said, but God does. You get on that bus, wipe that stuff off. You meet me at the McDonald's over here in Winston. Man, I fed more of McDonald's out that day. Randy took every kid home. He looked like he'd been come out of a coal mine in West Virginia. A month went by, and he said, Brother Dan, I think God's called me into missions. He said, I never had no schooling. I never had no Bible training. Will anybody use me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's where God's leading me to the Philippines. And uh, a little mission board used him. And ran, he didn't go to the uppy places. He didn't go to the five-star areas like most missionaries do. He went to the minus five stars right outside the dumps. And he went to the prison. That's where he was at home. I'm not lifting him up tonight, but Randy Childress, Chili Bean, had a heart. And he became the cause of many kids saved in our bus ministry. He became the cause of many prisoners saved at some uh, 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 maximum prisons in the Philippines. And he was the cause of many trusting Christ in a little ghetto church on the backside of a city dump. Because he had a heart. And he said, I just want to be the cause to get people to Jesus. All God's people said.
I want you to answer one question tonight as I close. Do you believe that God wants to enable you and others to go reach the lost in this community and around the world? If you do, you step up like David and you be the cause of this ministry growing and going and doing what God wants us to do. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. So we get ready to do the invitation. I know it was a different message tonight, but I hope it's one that will ring true to our hearts as we start this conference. And I want you to understand, God wants to prepare you. You young people, God has a plan, and he has a purpose for you. You older people, God wants you. God wants to use you. There's no age limit on this. And I just want, as a church, to encourage you to think on these things and apply them as we go into this conference. Would you stand to your feet, please, with your head bowed and eyes closed? I'm just going to call for a general floor of prayer. Would the church come forward and pray for the conference? Christians, come. Would you, would you come and just pray for God to do in others' hearts what he's doing in ours tonight right now? There may be somebody here, regardless of age, young people, or maybe an older, experienced person, and God's been stirring, and he hadn't been leaving you alone for a while. And maybe you need to come tonight and just say, Lord, I, I don't directly know what it is yet, but I know you're doing something in me. You're preparing me for something. Maybe you just need to come to an old-fashioned altar and just say, God, I don't know what it is, but I want to say yes. Maybe you're a young person here, a young man, and God's been dealing with your heart about preaching the gospel. You've been wrestling with it. You've been running from it. You've been talking to a couple of people about it. But you've never just come to an old-fashioned altar before God and said, Lord, I surrender. I give, and I'm yielding my life to you. Perhaps there's a church member that says, you know, Brother Matt, this thing of missions keeps coming back to my heart. And I think that God might be wanting me, my family, to go into missions. I don't know where you're at, but I know you need to answer if God's saying go. And as the instruments play, Christians are praying for the conference. Maybe you're here tonight and you walked into this church lost and you've never met Jesus Christ as your Savior. Let me say that he loves you very much. He died on the cross for your sins and rose again from the grave that you might have his eternal life. And all you have to do is receive it. The glorious gospel of Christ is being offered. If you need to be born again, would you step out of your place where you're seated, where you're standing, come down and take this gentleman's hand and say, I need to be born again. Whether you're at the altar or at the pew, let's just implore God, do something, do something special in this church, through our church, do something in my life and through my life. And Christian, let me say this very kindly. If you're here and your, stone, your heart is one of a stone or a very callous and hard, I'm praying for you praying for the Lord to crack that heart, hope, heart open. Pour his love into it. That you get a burden for people around you. Help us, Lord. Brother Brian, come and finish our altar time with a song, please. If you need to come, if there's still time. Have you any room for Jesus? He who bore your load of sin. and ask admission Sinner will you let him in Room for Jesus King of glory yes. Amen. Hasten now his word obey Sweet I'm excited for the week to start because God's done something special here tonight and he's preparing the field for harvest and one of those unique things that happen is when folks like Miss Joy Bass would you come up Miss Trina would you come and stand beside Miss Joy she came up this morning after church and said God spoke to my heart and this is where I need to be a church member and I appreciate that willingness eagerness she desires membership in this church by statement 
and we're privileged to be able to say, sis, we're honored to have you as one of our guests. Now, what I just need is, I just need a motion on the floor. Brother Nick, how about a second? Second, all right. Now listen, when I say all in favor of the hearty amen, I don't mean a Methodist amen. I mean a Baptist amen. All in favor, would you say amen? amen. <laughs> That's more like it. Amen, all right. Sister Joy, would you mind if we come by and shake your hand and greet you? She's going to be standing here. If you have time, come on by and greet our new member. We're so glad to have her. Listen, pray, pray, pray for, this, for the uh, conference coming up tomorrow. Don't forget, 7 o'clock tomorrow night, you'll have the opportunity to hear one of the greatest pastors in America. And I don't say that lightly. He'll be here preaching tomorrow. More importantly, God will be here, and we hope you are as well. God bless you as you go home, and be safe as you do go home. Well, we trust that the Lord spoke to your heart through our online services today. If you have trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior or made an important spiritual decision, connect with us at glbcs.org. We appreciate you taking the time to tune in today. I am Matthew Morrison, pastor of Gospel Light Baptist Church in Walkertown, North Carolina. Thank you for tuning in, and may God bless you as you go. I'm of a special